There's broad consensus on what developmental dyscalculia is. The way it's measured differs across labs. And one of the important things is that very few researchers look at stability of profiles. Um, so most people go in and test a group of children and then decide on a cutoff and call a certain group of children below a certain point dyscalculic. Uh, the problem is we found, and the others have found this too, is that a child may look a dyscalculic at one testing time point, but then look completely normal, even above the normal range, six months later or a year later. So the reasons for being bad on a math test at one time point are so variable. Maybe you're tired that day. If you then end up having the same math difficulties repeatedly, then that's a warning sign. So it's all about the, the stability of the profile. One of the key predictors of developmental dyscalculia is the their difficulty in processing number symbols. So when you ask a child with developmental dyscalculia to compare which of two number symbols is larger, or also whether three number symbols are in the right numerical order or not, they're significantly slower than their typically developing peers. And we've got some recent data that shows that that's true all the way through to grade six. So one of the metrics we have for quantifying individual differences in children's basic number processing is what we refer to as the numerical distance effect. So if I give you uh, two pairs of numbers, one and two and one and eight, the surprising thing is that it actually takes us quite a few hundred milliseconds longer to discriminate one and two versus one and eight. Now people have speculated as to what it really means. What does that mean about the way that numbers are you know, represented in our brains and in our minds? And one of the most popular metaphors is that we have an analog representation of number where you have some sort of mental number line. That doesn't actually mean that there's a topographical organization of number in your mind, but it's a nice metaphor, this idea of a number line. When you see uh, the number four, there's a very strong activation for four, but that activation also includes uh, numbers three and two and five and six. So it's not a precise tuning to, to one specific number. And that, of course, creates overlap between the representations of numbers that are very close together and numbers that are further apart, they share less representational variance on this number line, if you like. So it, it's been shown that children with developmental dyscalculia have a larger distance effect than children without developmental dyscalculia. And a larger distance effect means that, you're, that when numbers are very close, you're, much, you're really affected by that. And that then might suggest that they have more overlapping representations on their number line. I think one of the biggest issues is that very few people have multiple assessment points. And I think that's a huge problem because a child at one point, at one testing point, where a test can take only about two minutes, maybe they're not motivated. Maybe that year they don't, they're interested more in hockey. But the next year, because their parents have you know, started to refocus and they do fine. So they looked like they were dyscalculic, but they're actually not. And I think that's, that's, that's a real problem. And that's a message as well, I think, uh, for school psychologists, for educators, to look at multiple testing time points, to look at the stability of any kind of difficulty.